Hello, welcome back to Word for the Day. This is John again. Got an amazingly awesome message for you today, and I hope this speaks to uh, someone out there watching this video. So the subject I had in mind, this has been on my heart really all week since before my last message. Uh, I had heard some people tell me that, you know, well, if God knows how things are going to end, you know, he, uh, he knows what's going to happen. So there's, you know, how, how, is, how are we in control of our own destiny? Well, I just, let me explain it this way. I had, I had somebody tell me one time that, yeah, the tornado's coming, but I mean, you know, I, we didn't worry about leaving our house. We're going to stay in our house because if it's our time, it's our time. Well, that's actually contradictory to the word. And the word, I'm going to bring you a few messages and please watch this video to the end because there's a really amazing point at the end of this. Um, there's a scripture, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, I want to read to you. Um, it actually says God, God knows our natural time. He knows our, our, expected, our expected ending. Jeremiah 29, uh, says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, he doesn't tell you in that verse what the expected end is. Now, the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah is uh, writing to Jerusalem, is writing, um, um, telling the, the, the priests, the, the Pharisees, that um, they're, they're, they're exiling into Babylon. And uh, there's a part in here where he's telling them to, to, to go down into Babylon, camp out, be strong, basically thrive, have children, don't let what's going on c concern you. You know, stay focused on um, affairs of the kingdom, but not of the world. So thrive in that environment. And, and what he's saying is he knows our ending. He knows exactly whether or not it's a good or a bad ending. If it's natural, if it's something like there's a car wreck, God forbid. Well, that's not something you planned. If it's, he knows our expected end. And he's saying, wherever you are, make sure it's to advance the kingdom, to, to know that I already, have, I already have a place for you, but to thrive in wherever you are. And he'll use that. You know, the Bible says that the enemy um, 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 will be our footstool. And a footstool doesn't mean uh, something you rest your feet on, but it's something used to elevate you. So he'll use, even if the ending's a bad one, as long as it's natural, it's not something that you caused on purpose, he'll use that to advance his kingdom one way or another. I mean, it could be... The car wreck, my son was in a car wreck six years ago, and because of that, this is how I got close to Christ and I started preaching. So even in that bad thing, God used that as a footstool to elevate, to advance his kingdom, and here I am today. So um, Jeremiah 29, 11 is a very good verse um, saying he'll know our expected end. And when you get to Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, it says, I call heaven. Now this is the King James Version. It says, stay with me. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. In other words, a record against you that I have set before you life and death. In other words, he's scheduled life and death. He knows our life and our death, our birth and our death. Blessing and cursing. He knows if there's a blessing or a cursing. He knows everything. It doesn't mean he causes everything though, but he will use everything to advance his kingdom. And if he can't, then he may let that other thing happen. But anyway, blessing or cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now, in the Amplified, not the regular Amplified version, but the, it's called the classic Amplified King James. I'm gonna, it's, it's a little more literal. It says, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. Therefore, therefore, choose life. Okay, he says, that you and your descendants may live. So not only... Your decision that he has not, he, he, look, he knows your appointed time and, and he controls your natural uh, uh, destiny. But he's saying, choose life. He gives you an option. Free will is love. So if there's a tornado coming and you say, I'm going to stand in the road because, you know, if it's my time, it's my time. No, he gives you will to, to go hide, to go to save yourself. You, you can't blame everything on Satan when you just made a free will choice. Okay. Um, and so he's saying, look, he knows your expected, Jeremiah 29 says, he knows your expected end. It doesn't mean you're supposed to not save yourself, not not prepare yourself, not to go drinking, you know, a case of beer and then get in a car and wrecking your car and killing somebody. All right. That's not something God planned. He knows it'll happen. He may even use that incident, even though he gave you the free will to make your decision. He still will use that instant uh, instance to advance his kingdom somehow, maybe a testimony of someone lost in the wreck or whatever it might be. He'll always use our testimony. He'll always use something negative. I mean, he knew that Satan was, he knew what was going to happen in the garden, but he, but he knew ahead of time that, that, that he'd have to offer, he'd have to offer free will, but he knew he had a plan in place for salvation. So he still uses 
everything that he allows Satan to do to advance his kingdom. And so not to get off track, I want to, I want to mention another verse before I get to my point here. He says, see, listen, this is, check this out. This is Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Please stay with me. This is so good, man. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. He set before you options. Life is good, death and evil, right? All right, another scripture before I get to my main point here. And this is Ecclesiastes 7, chapter 7, verse 17. Follow me. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Don't be foolish. Don't be a part of wickedness. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? What's he saying there? He's saying you have a time. The Bible said there's a time, there's a season, there's a place. He has an appointed time, but he offers us free will to, to, to mess with that. And I know that some of you are going to say, well, that's not biblical. You know, well, it is. He has an appointed time. Of, of, he has blessing and cursing. But if you decide to do something on your own accord over free will, you can alter that time. You can die an early death because of your own choices. Now, he knows what will happen. He'll use it for his good some way or another, whether it's a testimony in my case. But you still have the choice to leave this world early through the unnatural, not through the natural. Um, and, and I want to make this point. Now, I'm going to get to something really cool before this video is over. Um, if you think about, um, I'll tell you what, if you think about um, Peter, let's mention Peter. I love, I love talking about Peter. So, you know, in the book of Acts, Peter would be the one that would start the church on his ministry would start the church. So before that, Peter got himself in a lot of trouble. He had foot and mouth disease. Um, if you remember, there was a there in the Bible, there was um, John, uh, John 18, the book of John 18, chapter 18, verse 10. It says, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote or, or cut, uh, you know, smite, you know, cut the high priest's servant his ear off. His name was Malchus. The servant's name was Malchus. He cut off his right ear. Well, so Jesus was going to his um, uh, death. Now, he was on his way to be crucified. And, and Peter's like, no, 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 don't, don't go, don't go. Not realizing. So when Jesus said there in the Bible, Satan, get behind me. It's, he's not saying Peter was Satan. He's saying, you won't even use my friends to get my, what I have planned. I have to go to the cross. I'm going to die an innocent death so that these people, Romans 6, 23, the gift of God is eternal life so that they have a way to heaven. They can be saved. And so Peter, not knowing that, he was really excited. He didn't want Peter to go. He didn't want Jesus to go to the cross. Like, no, don't go, don't go. Satan, get behind me. That's what he told Peter because Jesus knew where he had to go. He had to go to the cross. What he had to do was already written. He was going to do it. And whether it was friend or foe, he wouldn't let anybody get in the way. And so what's really cool, really what I wanted to talk about tonight was there's another part of the Bible where, where um, I told you where Peter cut off the servant Malchus's ear, right? And it's interesting. Most people, I think, when they hear that, they go, oh, well, Jesus did this, this loving, great thing and put the servant's ear back on to show them that he loves everybody. Well, that's a good story, but there's, there's something deeper than that. It's the, the only message in the Bible that I've ever seen where Jesus actually covered up a sin. He actually covered up a sin. So think about this. If Peter were going to start the church in Acts, see, because Jesus already knew that Peter would be the one for the job. But first, Peter had to go through some trials. And so what's cool about the story is Jesus put his ear back on. Why did he do that? Because if he had not of, and it would have gotten back to the Roman guards, Peter would have been crucified, would have been on the cross with Jesus Christ, and that church never would have started. So even when sometimes, let's say somebody that doesn't, you know, Jesus knows our expected end, even, there are some times, even when we get in the way, right, and we do things wrong, He'll still prevent it because he has something he's doing with that, that person to advance the kingdom. If it gets in the way of advancing his kingdom, he will stop it. He can, and he will sometimes. In the case of the ear, Jesus put his ear back on because Peter would have died and the church never would have started, and Jesus already knew that. So why did he put his ear back on? Why did he cover, why did he cover up sin in that case? Because he had, an, he had a plan. And nothing was going to get in the way of his plan. And in that case, Peter twice put and cutting off his ear, as well as telling him, no, Jesus, don't go to the cross. That's why I said, Satan, get behind me. No one stands in the middle of God's plan. So when you say that, well, I mean, it's all, it's God's timing. It's, we're going to go, we're going to go. Not true. Uh, well, in the natural, sure. Um, you know, he made us. But we can save ourselves. And if you think back to the other video, 
um, where I talked about the man that was at the pool um, for 38 years and he, he said he couldn't make it to get into the water to get the blessing and, and Jesus walked up and said can you not save yourself he was trying to tell the guy you have a choice to stand up and walk pick up your bed and walk man so you can't say oh Satan did it Satan did it Satan caused it no he didn't if you made a free will choice to drink and then go get in the car whatever it was it's just an example or to walk up to somebody and hit him in the face that's not Satan you chose to do that so you we can't blame everything on Satan we have an opportunity in this world to wake up with with a victim mindset or a um, um, or to, uh, we can be victims or we can be victors and so you have an appointed time the Bible says you do and the natural but there's another time when you can choose you can choose to do the right thing you can choose to get up and walk carry your bed you can choose to move out of the road, get away from the storm, or you can choose to, I'm not going to do that today because it wouldn't glorify God. So yes, he knows our death, he, he, and, and, but we, we choose. We, um, in the natural, I mean, as far as not in the natural, but we choose to alter that. Um, God gives us that free will. That's part of what he is. He loves. So uh, rather than being the victim and, and being the fool, the word tells you, um, that everything he does is to glorify God. And everything we should do should be to glorify God. Um, this word's powerful. It's a two-edged sword. It's, it's everything that's life. It's love. Um, what an amazing book. I don't know. I just wanted to tell you that. Um, I love you. God loves you. I'll see you next time. Peace.